Yeah, I guess this California thing people are saying is eleven times more deadly, but who knows? That's I don't a know. weird. What did they see? Sp- this is Spinal Tap. They turned the virus up to eleven. <laughs> Shut up. And again, how would they know? It's just all. Uh, it's all just doom and gloom. It's eleven times more deadly. Based on right. what? What do you write right. a blog? Right. Where did you get that stat from, weirdo? Right. That's why I just. I don't know. I'm getting vaccinated, and that's it. That's I mean, the end. I'll be all for me. If after that it kills me, then oh well. I mean, is getting attacked by a bear eleven times more deadly than getting attacked by a shark? <laughs> or the other way around? Yeah, is getting attacked by a shark eleven times more deadly than getting attacked by a bear? What if it it's would a be for you? What if it's a fucking polar bear? Does that increase right? it they, eleven times? That's a different strain of bear. It's a different strain of bear. God. (laughs) I mean, a koala bear is a different strain of bear, and you might survive that. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. A a poo bear, you would definitely survive. (laughs) A Kodiak bear, you know, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Like a black bear, probably not. Uh, a bear on Pornhub, well, <laughs> I don't know. You may or may if not I, survive that. If I said anything bad, I'd take it back because I do respect the virus and I respect that it's killed 500,000 people. I'm just uh, not really. Uh, I'm kind of like, like I, I shouldn't say I'm over it because I very much respect it, but uh, I'm kind of like ready for like to not think about it for a while. That's cool. Burn out. Tom, Tommy, you, what, you adopted the proper somber tone to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, so, I did because yeah. I, I get very somber about it because it's yeah. it's a very bad thing, right? Yeah. Like it's killed more Americans in like Vietnam and shit. So yeah. it's like it's weird. It, it, it's yeah. nothing. It's nothing to joke about. I would say it's something that we should respect very much. But at this point, you know, once I get the, once I get the vaccine and become fully vaccinated, and of course I'll still wear a mask and I'll still sanitize and all that stuff, but I think I'll I think I'm going to have to uh you know, go outside at some point. Dude, I really miss. This is the thing I miss most about the society. During lockdown, there was no motherfuckers on the road and it was great. <laughs> there was no traffic. You could go miles without seeing anybody it was it was the best like you're like will smith and i am legend absolutely like <laughs> i would i would deal with a bunch of weird looking zombie people vampire thingies <laughs> if it meant that i could drive down the road without seeing other vehicles cuz other vehicles tend to piss me off so well you know what pisses me off is uh, society most of the time so um, but this, we just talked about how stupid we are. And I was thinking about this earlier. I'm so stupid. Like I could never own a gun. I couldn't own a. I'm way too stupid to own a gun. People have asked me before, like, you got your license? I'm like, no, I don't have my fucking license. Do you know what I would do? Could you imagine me in a panic situation? And like, I had to pull a gun. I'd shoot the fucking cashier on accident. Right. People, people have invited me to go to the. The range. Want to go to the right. range, shoot some guns? No, because I don't want to shoot my foot. Because that's exactly what would happen. I think. Have I have I told the Tommy Two Shot story on this oh podcast? My God. No. Do you know it? No. Um, the Tommy Two Shot story is. Uh, it's funny because this happened like probably four. Mm, I would say anywhere from ten to fifteen years ago. And uh, just last year, I was working for Harley, and uh, one of the guys in the story walks in the dealership and sees me and just yells across the showroom floor, two shot, which is really funny. Um, But uh, uh, the night before Thanksgiving, yeah, I don't know, let's call it 2008, and uh, Abe Falcon and I and a few other people uh, decided that we were going to shoot one of the person's guns. And uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. It sounds like the dumbest thing ever. Was alcohol and, involved? Yeah, but not to the point like it was, but it was like before we started. We all had, and like I had like one beer, I think. But like 
nobody, I don't know. I don't even know if I had a beer yet. We had beer there, but it was like very, it was like right when we got there, somebody was like, Hey, let's shoot this gun before we start drinking. So at least we did that. And, uh, um, yeah, it was the night before Thanksgiving. Of course, there's alcohol involved. What tipped you off there, private investigator? I'm a real <laughs> inspector gadget. Yeah, good good work, detective. Go, go, um, gadget deductions. But I do remember the person with the gun was like, if anybody's drank, then you can't shoot the gun. So I don't think I had had a drink yet. Nowadays, I probably would have had a shot before I even got there. But I don't <laughs> think I had had a drink yet. And uh, just uh, one. I mean, just one shot. Um, Bruce Springsteen ended up over here. Did you hear about that? About Bruce Springsteen? Getting pulled over? Yeah. Did you hear that he blew like a .02 or something? Yeah. Oh, my God. What a dickhead cop. And and <laughs> and that happened in Jersey, right? Yeah. He was like, where he's, stop to take some pictures with some fans. Where he's the fucking king. Like, right, why, right. <laughs> how do you expect Somebody, to have a job in the morning there, cop? I'm t- some cop that didn't like that Bruce Springsteen supports Biden or whatever. You know, I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> but anyway, like he, he did the thing right in front of the cop. He knew the cop was there. He just took a shot of tequila. Holy shit. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but uh, that drives me mad. But uh, don't be. Anyway, mad. so I get over to this house and we'll say whose house and uh, and um, yeah, the person with the gun is like, all right, before we start drinking, anybody want to shoot my gun? And I was like, yeah, I want to shoot your gun. Like, why wouldn't I want to shoot a gun? Well, I don't want to shoot a gun because as soon as I shot it, I shot it once, and as I was lowering it to the ground, I. I don't know what happened. It went off again and it almost blew my fucking foot off. <laughs> See? And that's the, <laughs> that's the last time I'll ever touch it on. It's uh and that's how I got the nickname uh Tommy Two Shot. Yes. Which sounds like a badass nickname, but it's like Tommy Too Stupid is pretty much what it means. I mean, I don't even remember pulling the trigger the second time, so I don't know what the fuck happened. I was just literally lowering the gun to hand it back to the guy. Oh, that's even worse. Imagine, right? If- well, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't there yet. To, okay. You know, he was waiting for me to get it down by my side. You know, and then I was gonna like you know cautiously hand it off to him and probably put the safety on. I'm sure he showed me how to do that or whatever. But yeah, just it was like a, and then I was lowering it and it was, I was like what the fuck. So at least I held on to it. At least I didn't drop it and then fire it like a third time. How, how did you kill that man? I don't know. I was just handing him the gun. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Tommy shot himself between the eyes. That's sad. No, you should have seen what happened. Yeah. It's actually pretty impressive. Dude, I, I I just couldn't I couldn't imagine me being in like a dollar general and somebody <laughs> tries Christ. to rob them. And somebody tries to rob the place, and here I am, the only one with the fucking packing heat. Yeah. Hey, you. <laughs> you put that gun away. <laughs> uh, uh, so I said I'd shoot, I'd shoot somebody innocent on accident. I know I would. So I had to go through training in the, in the schools for, like, school shooters. Yeah. And, um, like, the cops came in and everything and, like, trained us and shit. And we watched all uh-huh. these videos, and we watched this video of this this dude that was like so amped up. He he tried to shoot all these people in the classroom, and he missed every time. Then tried to shoot himself and missed that too. Like he held the gun up to his temple, but he was so amped up he missed that. What? Yeah, that's right. So wow. Ba- yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, the idea is if you <laughs> Jeremy didn't speak in class. Yeah. Okay. So, like, the the police success rate in hitting a target when they shoot is, like, 35%. So if, yeah. if there's a person in public and they start shooting and you, I don't know, throw something at them, it just blows their mind. They don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why they train cops to shoot to kill, too, right? Probably. I mean, you, you got yeah, it because like you know, there's always somebody like, why don't they just shoot him in the leg? Well, you're going to miss. Exactly. You you got to shoot for the, the trunk because that's the biggest part of the body. 
because right. right. likely two out of the three shots they're probably going to miss. Right. So you shoot and you shoot to you shoot you don't shoot to harm. I, I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong about this, but I think they trained me to shoot to kill because one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to piss off somebody with a gun. Right. I suppose that's a rule. Yeah, like you don't want to like hit him in his toe, and now he's like really mad. I would be pissed if I, I get so furious if I stub a toe. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even think about that. That'd probably be the worst place to get shot, other yeah. than like the head or something. Yeah, you you <laughs> take off a, uh, <laughs> the tip of my big toe, and I will be so cross with you. <laughs> Feels like I just kicked my fucking dresser. <laughs> That wall just leapt out in front of me. <laughs> We're very weird tonight. We're this, very like, I don't know. I don't think any of this is usable. <laughs> Quite honestly. The Tommy two shot story could be. Oh, man. Tommy. Yeah. You ever been a sports dad? You got a couple of kids. They're in all these sports. Yeah. They play at a very high level, very elite. They're very good at what they do. You ever been a sports dad? You ever been in that crowd? You ever... You ever shouted at a ref? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God. Yes. You're the stereotype, aren't you? Well, no. I mean, uh, I've seen people actually get kicked out of games for doing that. But, uh, yeah, there was this one ref last year that was uh, – he was, he was asking for it. He was being he a jerk. He was asking. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't the only one yelling at him pretty much the whole yeah. – uh, from from both, I mean, parents from both of the teams. He was just he was being ridiculous, and then uh, and then our old buddy uh, Nate from uh, 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 Billy's was was reffing too, but I didn't yell at him. No, why? No, no, because he was all right. He was all right, but yeah, there was this one ref this one time that I yeah I did I did I I don't know what I yelled something stupid like I don't remember like get a life ref or I don't know what I yelled. But. <laughs> <laughs> you are a sports dad. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I mean, most of the time, most of the time I, I don't say anything, but uh, this one, I mean, I wasn't the only one. So it was, it was, it was probably just more like, Oh, come on, Raph or something stupid like that. But, In my mind, it takes a lot of gumption to be at a high school sporting event and be like, good life, Raph. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I said get a life. I just thought that'd be funny. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> um, yeah. You got to be into it. That's for sure. You, okay. you definitely, uh, you definitely got to be invested. I mean, that's that would be very rude if you said that to the man, that man, because you don't know his I life. Didn't you don't I didn't know his life. His life. That's why I thought it was so funny to say because <laughs> there's no way I would. I probably just said, "Oh come on," or something like that. Oh know? Boulder Dash, right, <laughs> Poppycock. Uh, no, but there was other parents like yelling, like "Open your eyes" and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I have been. I'm usually not though. That's like one out of five hundred million. I mean, my kids, both of my kids are in sports year round. So one time I was at a high school basketball game and um, I watched this man, this, this sports dad. Yeah. Sit there and get redder by the minute. (laughs) It it was like watching a time-lapse video of a volcano erupt. It was amazing. It was so great. Like, I'm like, what is going on in your life where you're getting this fucking hopped up that you have to care so much? Like, I understand that's your kid out there and stuff, but also, I don't know. There's things to worry about that's not this. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, poverty I think so. and cancer. and Yeah, I think some parents get into it a, a, a wee bit much. Um. I like to cheer a lot for my kid, but I cheer when the other team does well too. Like I like to clap a lot. So, <laughs> but, you know, I'm, you know, I, go get them, you know, like I was watching the volleyball game the other day and the other team made a good point. So, I, you know, I clap. All right. All right. All right. That was a good one. <laughs> oh my God. You're that guy. I mean, why not? I mean, why not? Why not? Why not? What am I supposed to sit there and not pay attention? That's not fun. Don't give kudos to people. Nobody likes that. That's weird. Well, I, I don't like make sure they hear me or anything like that. <laughs> hey, number 12. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. Hey, hey. 
<laughs> you and the ponytail. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> let's get this kid a trophy. Yeah. No, come, no, I don't. Come bump this fist and let's blow it up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Now that would be a good SNL skit, though, right? Like the, <laughs> I think so. Like whose dad is that? And everybody's like, he's nobody's dad. He just shoves up. <laughs> <laughs> he's wearing like a jersey from the school, the seventies. I don't know anything, but I decided basketball dads are the worst. I sat there and I watched this lava man erupt, like, and he was just like he was doing the same thing you were. He was like cheering his son on and. Like screaming at him the whole time, I'm like, yeah. and, and I'm like, what is that kid supposed to do out there as he's playing the ball, as he's balling? <laughs> what is he supposed to like? Your inspiring words have increased his determination and grit, and most importantly, his heart by tenfold. <laughs> is that what you think happened? Have you ever, Tommy, have your heart increased by tenfold? No, I don't think so. That's good because then you'd have an enlarged heart and you'd go into cardiac arrest. You know? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Oh my god, I'm at this basketball game and these 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 coaches. You've never seen somebody so disgusted and enraged as a high school coach watching one of their players mess up. Like they, <laughs> it's the best. It. I'm like, how are you so worry free that this is just really putting some gas, some sugar in your gas tank? Like how, well, that's 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 why they're in the position, and you're not, though, Randy. Because they care a lot, I guess. Because they care a lot, exactly. They're invested. They're emotionally invested, and they want to win, and they're very competitive. Like my uh, high school football coach, oh, my God, he looks like a chicken. He just walks around <laughs> and kicks dirt, and he throws the clipboard all the time, and he screams at the refs, and, and it's crazy. Pecks the ground for grubs every now and then. Uh, that's that's what it looks like. It's so funny. He'll just start kicking like he just took a shit or something. Like he's a freaking bulldog in it, trying to cover his mess. He's a kitty cat. <laughs> he's a winner. I mean, my and my. I mean, we're known as a f- football powerhouse. So, yeah. Oh man, I think the problem is that every white dude in America at a basketball high school basketball game thinks they can play basketball. Yeah, right. Those are the best, right? Like, oh, you missed that layup. It's like, well, you go down there and do it then. Exactly. This guy is shouting things like, get to the rim, get to the rim. And I'm like, no, duh. (laughs) That's the entire fucking object of the game. You don't have to tell him that. Get the rebound. Yeah. (laughs) Get that rebound. It's like, can't you see him trying? Post (laughs) up. Post up. You don't even know what that means. Why are you saying (laughs) it? Yeah, there's a lot of those parents, and yeah, that's funny. I'm here to say that other than the size of their wing, it's the thing that white guys exaggerate about the most, basketball, in whether or not they can play. Every white guy thinks they, every white guy over the age of 35 thinks they can play basketball, and they've always been good, and that's a problem. (laughs) That's an issue. Yeah, I may be the only honest man in America, but I can't play basketball, and I'm here to tell you that I can't. There was a yeah. there was a stretch in my youth where I would sit there and I had a basketball room, and yeah. I would sit there and shoot some shots because you need to shoot yeah. your shot. Yeah, and I got pretty yeah. good at that. However, uh, these uh, street toughs were walking down the road and wanted to play basketball with me. And I said, oh, no, no. And I ran and hide. I literally did. I ran into the garage where my dad was. And my dad said, did they just inv- did they just want to play basketball with you? And I said, oh, yup. <laughs> and he said, did you, su- did you just run in here and hide? And I said, oh, yup. <laughs> because you know what? I, I don't have all the time for all these juke moves. You know, I don't need to dribble. I don't, there's too much deception in this basketball. (laughs) You know, you can be into deceitful things. I'm too honest for that. I just want to shoot the ball and make it go in the the, the little basket there. I don't want to be all flashy. I don't want to. 
Okay. When I was when I was a kid, I was really, 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 really good. Like I was the best out of probably like fifteen kids in my. Oh, family. here we go. Like I said before, I was, every I white really dude good. in America over the age of thirty-five. Oh, not, it's funny because like it is funny because you're proving my point. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, I said when I was a kid, and uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, mm-hmm. But wait until I get to it because every backyard basketball game, I was the man. Tomahawk you jam. Put, you put me in a game where I had to like follow like plays and like shit like that. I I I was terrible, terrible. I don't know. I just like always froze up. I didn't I, like. I just wanted you know like I, I don't know. I didn't want the people to yell Michigan, Michigan. I'm like I don't know what the <laughs> fuck. I don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. <laughs> so I wasn't very good when it come to organized. But backyard, uh and uh yeah and i'm still i actually i'm okay like if i play up against a, another guy that thinks he's good there's no way i'd win but i'm i'm okay i'm okay i i think you'd be surprised watching me play basketball i'm not i'm not terrible i would be shocked and i don't even like basketball i don't even like it i'm pretty athletic and i don't think oh, a lot of Christ. people i am here you are let's go White guy Let's go over play, 35. Uh, backyard football or basketball. I'm a lot more athletic than people give me credit for. I'll fucking knock I was, your ass out. I was out. the MVP of flag football tournament sixth grade at my middle school. How about that? And the and the teacher is the one that chose the MVP. Well, that's cool. We were talking about basketball, not football, but yeah, yeah, I like football better. That's why I just switched it up. It's the same thing. I mean, there's there's still the same white dude in the stands. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just because the sport changes doesn't mean their attitude does. I, I, I like how you said that if, if, if it's organized and you have to run plays, you're no good at it. But if it's AWOL oh. sports, you're all about it. You're just That's out right. there wilding out. That's true because I didn't want to. I, I never got the <laughs> concept of like following. Like, okay, now I got to go down to the paint and I got to pause for three <laughs> seconds and I'm supposed to jump out. No, just give me the fucking ball and let me put it in the hoop. But if you gave me the ball, I, I my mind would go, oh shit, what am I supposed to do with it? Because normally I would dribble it and put it in the basket, but I didn't. I didn't. Ah, so I hated it. I hated playing. The only the only school sport I was ever good at was wrestling, and I didn't even do it past middle school. I want to start an entire sports streaming channel called A Wall Sports, where there there's no rules. It's just nonstop chaos, and ah, <laughs> anything goes. Well. I mean, we had like, you know, like the, the backyard rules or whatever, you know, I think anybody that's played a lot of pickup basketball knows if the other person, if you're playing a one-on-one and the other person hits the rim, well, then you got to take the ball back. You know, you can't just grab the ball and put it up because, you know, if you're playing one-on-one at a half court, there's got to be some sort of, some sort of organization. Okay. It's true. All right. (laughs) <laughs> well but you got me all, you got me all wound up about basketball and now i'm realizing i haven't played in over a year and now i'm like oh, i want to go play see you're a sports dad do you think you're real good because you're over no, the I age of 35 and you're white well you're... i know i'm not good i said that mm. i'm not good i like playing i think i would surprise you because i'm i'm like good at the fundamentals i'm just not like i don't know i bet you if you gave me Five chances to hit a three pointer, I might hit it two out of the five. Man, what's the percentage on that? Not good. Not That's good. what I'm saying. Yeah. But, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I'll get close the other three times for sure. I won't airball it or anything. Chances are, Tommy, you would surprise me. You constantly surprise me. I'm surprised you make it through every day without falling down and crying all the time. <laughs> so, I yes. Cry- wait, wait, wait a second. I mean, there's. <laughs> who says I don't do that? I, I was just building you up for the listeners they don't need to know what a mess you are 
You're their I mean, hero. I'm, 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 I'm truth, man. I'm all about truth. Oh, well, you are That's what truth. I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not claiming to be great at basketball. I'm not even claiming to be good at basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying I'm probably better than what – if people looked at me, they'd be like, that guy don't even know how to dribble. Dude, I can dribble between my legs and all that jazz. That was gross. Don't say dribble between your legs. That's <laughs> – Oh God! Uh, oh, you're can... not a basketball person, so you, you your mind goes somewhere else. There. Oh, my mind goes to drop that beat, dear boy. Put it in, put it in, put it in. We're drinking some of shandy on Thursday. We so motherfucking out here, though. We never been this out here. Well, I've been working like a working man do. Got my act together, gonna walk all over you. Pressure pushing down on me, pushing down on you. Shit, let's raise the roof. Woo! About time, it's the era of the rebels. Cloud nine in the era of the vessels. Generation fearless, got a taste for weirdness. Flow on fire, that's the way my beard is. Hard times, jump starting to grind. It's all good, y'all. Things fall apart sometimes. Let it go, let me know when you're ready, though. Don't push me, cuz until the edge I'm close. When the time comes, ride for something. Or live to be nine and then just die for nothing. Speak their heart, your baby, speak their mind. And I'ma play their part and I'ma freak that rhyme one time for you. Rhyme one time for you. I'm an island, man. There ain't nothing else by me, man. And I drink enough whiskey to float a battleship around this bitch any motherfucking how. Wow. Welcome to the Miserable Retail Slave Show. We're coming to you from the pot shack outside beautiful Bay City, Michigan, USA. My name is Randy. And with me is that man. His name is Tommy Thompson. What's up, sir? Hey. Hey, uh, nothing. Nothing's up. Nothing's up. Fun. Is it? Is this almost, fun to you? It's almost running season again. I'm excited about that. How is this life fun to you? What is fun? What is uh, fun these days? Seriously. That's what it is. <laughs> You're not what? Not taking life seriously. That's what makes it fun. Are you? How, where did this Zen philosophy come from? Because you've been stewing and fretting for most of your life. All of a sudden, you don't <laughs> care? Not right you now. Nihilist? No, I mean, I've been, I think I've been a nihilist for the past few years. I just don't really uh, you know, like talk about it too much. But yeah, I would call myself a nihilist. Oh my God! He's plotting the destruction of this earth. He's a supervillain. You heard it, folks. He's going no, out to get you. Don't think that most of the things that people worry about fucking matter. And what do you <laughs> worry about, Tommy? What do you oh worry about God, that everything. matters? Tell me what matters that you worry about. Spiders? Uh, huh? No. No. I don't worry about spiders. What do you worry about on any given day? Tell me now. Holy shit. Tell me what I don't worry about. I Well, you just seem Mr. Confident and, and secure in life, so I need to know what <laughs> uh, really rattles your chains. Dude, I worry about everything. 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 My mind never stops worrying. I probably should be medicated. My favorite thing to fret about these days is getting in a car accident. Uh-huh. Every time I'm on the road, I'm like, oh, I see how that man can kill me. Oh, I see how that man can kill me. So so this will be a very tragic thing when you download this episode in a week and I'm dead from a car accident because I, I just told you, you know. What's the definition of tragic? Tragic Kingdom. Um, it, it was a great No Doubt album. It had that yeah. song "Don't Speak." That's uh, yeah. really great. It really slaps, you know, oh, as the kids for say. You. Yeah, good for me, indeed. Good, yeah, yeah, dad talk. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm in <laughs> tune. I know what's yeah. 
What's no, on, I don't worry. On I just worry about I worry about irrational things, not rational things. I worry about things I can't control. So that's that's the problem. Like shark attacks, I agree. That's on right. my mind right. always. I don't worry about that. Oh. I'm not afraid of sharks. Yeah, but that's your that's your fear. Interesting. I learned there was like. <laughs> Did you know this about this this United States of America? Did you know there was alligators in Oklahoma? What? Yeah. The Oklahoma alligators. Sounds like something Toby Keith would be singing about. Oh, my God. Dude, I heard this song, by the way. And I'm going to tell you all about it because now you're going to set me off, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so I heard this song today, in fact. And it's it's by a man named Sam Hunt. Have you heard of this cat? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he used to play college football. What? Yeah, he was a quarterback. What? I can't remember. Middle 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 Tennessee University something. Middle like Tennessee University. That's barely a thing that exists. I think it was D1 or D2 though. Christ. I have to look look it up. I think he's D1 or D2. Why don't you hype up your flag football days? That's about as irrelevant as fucking Middle <laughs> Tennessee whatever. I'm probably wrong. I know he was like he—he he was the starting quarterback somewhere. Why are you his bi- biographer? Why do you know so much I about can't this remember boy? Where I heard that. Oh my uh, god! You, you should double check that. But I I'm don't pretty want sure to. True. I'm going to now because I'm intrigued by this <laughs> this hunt. I'm not sure about middle. I was just that was the first college that popped in my head. I don't know if that's. I don't think that's right. But I know he was a quarterback. Oh boy! Look at that picture of Sam Hunt. He looks like a smiling buffoon. <laughs> we can't look at it, Randy. We're not with you. Well, just Google it. You'll you'll do a thing. Yeah. Uh, so born, shut up. I'm talking here. <laughs> he what he do? He something football. He played football in high school and college years. Oh, you were right. Middle Tennessee State University. What the, I don't I don't know how I pulled that out of my head because I literally heard that one day in passing and I was like oh that's a little interesting. All right, fanboy, you know. Yeah, I don't even know the name of the song that he sings. Uh, he uh he actually had a trial with the Kansas City Chiefs in two thousand eight. Wow. Okay. And he said, uh, I knew this was a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I needed to find out if I could take it. All the way. And he, he found did. out he couldn't. Do you think you could make the, the football team on uh, Middle Tennessee? No. No. I no? Was well, I don't <laughs> think Middle Tennessee is anything to write home about. <laughs> I think they're, they got to be Division Two, which isn't bad. How do you know so much about Middle Tennessee? I'm just guessing. Am I right? Uh, I don't know. It sounds right. I, yeah, right. That's yeah, what right. Saying. That's I, what I said. I, it sounds right. <laughs> what is this podcast anymore? What a weird fucking week this is. <laughs> Anyways, I heard this song today. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, clear your throat some more. There's an alligator in my throat. Let me clear my throat. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I heard this song by this hunt, and it's called uh, Body Like a Back Road. Have you heard this song? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think so. Uh, it sounds familiar. What a dumb thing this is. Like, he sings this in this little seductive voice, like, as seductive as a dumb man can be. Like, I'm a stallion, <laughs> and these words are going to really woo you. Like, I don't know if women have phone sex lines. I don't know that, that that's a thing. Because, like, who who calls a phone sex line? How does that... a uh, I uh, uh, no idea. Yeah, I don't know if women have these things where men like talk all sorts of romance novel trash to them to get all all sorts of excited. But I mean, Sam, yeah, Hunt's, I think so. How do you think so? Ask the beloved well, how many times she calls a phone sex line. I need to know. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like Fifty Shades of Grey is a big thing. Magic Mike was a big thing. So. I think there's some sort of thing there. I would think. Men are so dumb though. How are yeah. they gonna be like sexy? I got a <laughs> I got this penis here. But anyways, in this song I imagine Sam Hunt is basically the equivalent of that. Like he's like purring all these lines. He's really trying to flood all the basements, you know. He's like uh-huh. 
So it's called Body Like a Back Road. And he's like, you know, hey, girl. Hey. I'm going to write this song about you. Girl, your body reminds me of this road. I'm going to drive all up and down it, even do donuts. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's dirty and... <laughs> yeah, right? It has yeah. tons of guys on it drinking beer. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> body like a... Be- ah. yeah, what, what does I that mean? I know this song, but my mind keeps going to um, the Jason L. Dean song. What is that? Yeah, Swear Dirt Road. Down. It's a much Dirt better Road. song, yeah. And it's yeah, not that about song's good. That it, song's good until he raps and it sucks. Yeah, this is true. But also it's not <laughs> comparing a girl's body to a back road, which seems right. like a bad idea. Like <laughs> it's, it's like, mm. man, those pimples that you had as a teenager. Yeah. Really brought some craters in. <laughs> exactly. Like you sure got some big potholes, girl. <laughs> right. You must have had some back knee back in the day. Yeah. You got lots of loose gravel, girl. <laughs> You've been road hard. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of roadkill on that body there. Hey. <laughs> like I, I understand vaguely what he's trying to go for. Like, oh, curvy or something. Curvy, indeed. Like, but how many curves? You like, you got a crooked lady there. She got a broken <laughs> leg or something. Dead end. Yeah. <laughs> Dead end. No outlet. <laughs> like uh, the, 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 that's not a good metaphor. Like how many? Cr- no, it's terrible. It's awful. So here's the fucking song, right? I just googled the goddamn lyrics. So here's one. Here's one of the stanzas in this this beautiful work of poetry. Had to get her number. It took me like six weeks. Now me and her go way back, like Cadillac seats. Damn! <laughs> Fucking poet prince here. Six weeks. God damn. <laughs> I mean, you, you, she's got a body like a back road, though. So you know, maybe that's the <laughs> the working time of wooing a girl. With one of those uh, those boondock booties. <laughs> oh, Sam Hunt. Should have stuck with football. Should have stuck at Middle Tennessee. Well, apparently not, because he's, I mean, we're talking about him. We're, we would have been talking about him if he would have stuck at Middle Tennessee. Exactly. We're like the Middle Tennessee of podcasts, so... <laughs> He says, doing 15 in a 30. I ain't in no hurry. Well, that's yeah. because you're on a back road. You don't want to skid out and end up in a ditch. Right. What, right. What's that that's do right. to your metaphor? What's a ditch in this <laughs> girl's back road body? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I don't want to know. I could just, I just picture some fucking meathead, like, you know, in a cutoff flannel holding a puke. Pool cue, a, a puke bush cue, light. absolutely. Yeah. This is a me holding the pool cue in a bush light, a cut off flannel at a bar, nodding his head to this song. Oh, without a doubt, and also like waiting, for, waiting for his buddy to miss the next shot. You know, just... yeah. <laughs> and also, I can see like a bunch of chicas at at whatever bars that are open in the history of whenever things open. Right, wearing shirts that are way too short and showing their flabby little midriffs, like really getting <laughs> excited that this song's on. Like, oh boy, wow. yes, my body's like a back road too. <laughs> Don't you think, Daniel? Yeah, ends in dead end. <laughs> like winking at their ex boyfriends from across the bar. Don't you think you can just peel out on this dirt road, boy? (laughs) Wink. Uh, (laughs) Skid marks up the back. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what a stupid song. Oh, my God. What are these songs that he has? Okay, let's look at his entire discography here. He's got a song called 
kin folks. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. House oh, party sinning with you. I think I know the kin folk one. Why do you know this man? Well, I haven't heard it, but I'm going to read the lyrics. I okay. saw you going by. I had to say hello. I saw you going by. I had to say hello. I don't mean <laughs> to pry, but girl, I got to know. What is your name? <laughs> Jesus Christ. How come I ain't seen you around before? Tell me. <laughs> now you know I ain't ever had a type. Having a type takes two. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I know what I like, and you're the only one of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Sam Hunt's going to be really mad when he hears this as he's wiping his tears with $50,000 yeah Sam Hunt will you be our, our guest on this podcast I bet Sam Hunt has a real great sense of humor because he writes these songs and he knows oh, he, yeah. he's got to know he's right got, I mean I don't know how you <laughs> I mean I don't He's just. It sounds like like a like a bad Randy Newman or something. I oh here's here's the chorus. I want to introduce you to my kin folks, to my <laughs> old friends, to the house in the pines where the road ends. Take yeah, you to my it. hometown where I grew up, where I thought I knew it all before I knew what love was. <laughs> What a dumb episode this is. Why did we even yeah, do this? this? Is really dumb. <laughs> this is so dumb. I can't put this on any sort of platform. Except oh, Patreon. No. Pay a dollar. Do it. <laughs> Where did we go wrong? Why did we go off the rails so bad? This is th- I don't know. We haven't epically failed this bad in like several years. No, but it was still fun. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, usually we're right to business and get it done and... <laughs> Not, not on this yeah. day. I guess I don't know. Yeah, maybe none of it's good. I don't know. I'm twenty years from now when I'm finally making twenty five thousand dollars at comedy, somebody's gonna pull it from the vault and have me canceled. <laughs> is, is that your lofty goal to make twenty five thousand dollars at comedy? <laughs> <laughs> A boy can dream. A boy can dream. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna be happy till I make poverty level at comedy still. Oh, I wouldn't be happy. That. I I wouldn't be happy if I made a million dollars at com- I wouldn't be happy with comedy. I should say. No, I think that's the life of most most uh, comedians. Though you never you never you never satisfied with your with your. With your uh, craft, I guess it's just your say. art, Tommy. Your art. I definitely think it is an art. I, I'm one of the people that buy into that part of it. I think it is an art because I feel like I'm uh, painting a picture with my words. How about that? It's totally an art, right? Yeah, there's some people out there that say that it isn't, but those people usually are the ones that have never done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, can I tell you a joke? Sure. I'm going to cover a joke. Okay. It's going to be great. So I heard Brian Regan tell this joke. He told it yeah. to me, obviously. You know. Have you heard it? Have you watched his new special? No, not yet. Okay. I think it's out. I think it's on Netflix. I think so. That's probably what he's promoting. He was on a podcast. And he was telling a joke that he heard. He was telling a joke that Norm MacDonald told him. And he wasn't even uh-huh. sure if Norm McDonald made it up or Norm, Norm McDonald heard it. So I don't yeah. I don't really feel bad covering it whatsoever. Okay. So bear with me with this one because it's 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 definitely a Norm McDonald joke. It's one of okay. those. A frog walks into a bank and he goes to the customer service counter because he wanted to get a loan to finally buy a home of his own. And he walks up to the customer service rep, and the rep is like, what is up with this frog? But it's trying to be really professional about the whole thing. So she says, oh, you want a loan? 
You'll want to talk to Mrs. Whack. Hold on. I'll get her for you. I just heard this. Where did I hear this? I heard this somewhere, but keep going. Did you really? Damn yeah. it. All right. Go ahead, though. So Mrs. Whack comes out and greets the frog and takes him back to her office. And the the frog notices that her office door says, Patty Whack, loan specialist. Yeah. <laughs> you did hear this? Yeah. Where did you hear uh, it? When- I don't remember, but when you get to the punchline, I'll I'll say it. Okay, so they sit down and yeah, it's all in the punchline. I I think the 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 rest of it is completely irrelevant, but whatever. So they sit okay. down and Mrs. Whack asks how much the the frog wants to be loaned and what it's for, and the whole time she's thinking about how unusual this is. Like here's a frog and it's talking to me. What the fuck? And so the frog launches into this whole sob story about his life, like he's sitting on a therapist's couch or something, and the frog reveals that back in the 70s, his mother was a hot young frog, and she met Mick Jagger, and after a wild and crazy alcohol-fueled night, you know, one thing led to another, and he was conceived. And the loan specialist is like, oh my god, Mick Jagger, she's in awe, and she thinks, what what a strange situation I'm in here. Uh Uh-huh. So she tells the frog that the bank needs some sort of uh, co- collateral against the loan, and the frog pulls out a tiny pink ceramic elephant and says, this is my collateral, it's everything I own. And Mrs. Wax says, oh, this is not typical of what we usually see. I have to ask my manager about this. Usually we need something more than this. So Mrs. Wack goes to her manager and shows him the tiny pink elephant and points to the frog in her office and explains the whole story. And the manager points at the pink elephant she's hand- holding in her hand and says, that's a knickknack, Patty Wack. Give that frog alone. His old man is a rolling stone. <laughs> I didn't hear the last part. Oh. His old man is a rolling stone. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I just remember the knickknack patty whack. Give the give that frog alone. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear the his old man is a rolling stone bar. Not that I, God, I don't know where I heard this. I, I I don't know where I heard this. I must have been listening to something half asleep the other night or something. But uh, <sighs> do you listen to oh, the, do, do you listen to the good ones podcast? Well, it just came out today though. I think. Yeah. No. So I don't know. Maybe I saw it on Facebook. Maybe. No, that would be that would be way too long. I had to have heard it somewhere. Yeah, probably. So the uh the Good Ones podcast is a podcast where the host has famous comedians on and they they dissect like one particular joke. Yeah, it's Mike Rebiglia, right? No. It's uh somebody else. Uh, uh Mike Rebiglia has uh one the same sort of podcast. Yeah, his is called something different though. I do listen yeah. to that as well. I'm trying to think of my favorite Norm McDonald joke, and I can't remember it now. But Dirty Work is the uh, the uh, uh, only movie in I think the only movie in the very especially the very first movie that I watched, and I shut off and I rewound and I immediately watched again all the way through. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of my favorite Norm joke, and it's about uh, God. I it's it's stupid because I'm never gonna remember it. Because it it goes, it, you have to remember it word for word, or it doesn't work. But it's about uh, he's got a new uh, neighbor, and uh-huh. uh, he sees a neighbor at uh, uh the mailbox. He's like, "Hey, neighbor, I'm Norm." And the neighbor's like, "Hey, Norm, I'm Joe. I'm a professor of logic down at the uh, university." And the, and Norm goes, "Ah, logic, huh? What's what 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 do you do about logic?" And the uh, guy said, "Okay." He said, "Well, I'm looking at your house. Uh, you have a big house, so that means that means that you probably um, have a wife and kids." And Norm goes, "Yeah, yeah, I do have a wife and kids. I do." And the guy goes, "Okay, I'm looking in your backyard, and uh, so logic would tell me that you know that uh, you know wife and kids. You got a back your 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 yard's fenced in, so that tells me you got a dog." And he goes, "Wow, I do have a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah." And he goes. Uh, and I can't remember the rest of it, so I'm gonna have to come back to it. Oh, that's really... uh, what a great, <laughs> yeah, what a great story. But the funniest thing is, is that like it goes on and on, and it, the 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 guy makes it. I'll, I'll just ruin it. I'll just ruin it. Yeah, and then you guys can go. Um, anyway, um, 
okay, this is what it was. So the guy, the, the professor of logic goes, well, you got a big house. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I do. And he goes, yeah, it, uh, you got a dog in your backyard? And he goes, yeah, I got a dog. And he's like, cool, you know, you got a dog. So that means you probably have a, a wife. He goes, yeah, I got a wife. And he goes, okay, that means you probably have some kids. And Norm's like, yeah, yeah, I got kids. And he goes, well, logic has led me to the chance thing. I can look at your house. Logically, I could say that you, you have a dog, so you probably have a wife. And if you have a wife, you probably have kids. That's how logic works. And Norm's like, ah, all right, logic, got it. So Norm, <laughs> Norm goes to the grocery store and he bumps into his other neighbor. And he's like, hey, neighbors, me, Norm. <laughs> He's like, hey, Norm. He's like, hey, did you meet Joe, the new neighbor? He's like, no, I haven't. Norm's like, ah, he's interesting. He's a professor of logic down at the university. And the neighbor goes, what's logic? Norm's like, well, let me ask you something. And the neighbor goes, okay. And Norm goes, uh, you got a dog? And the neighbor goes, no. Norm goes, oh, so you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Because right. it, it doesn't lead back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I kind of screwed it up, but then I remembered it as I was going. So no, yeah. that's that's a Norm McDonald punchline. So <laughs> you got a dog? No, so you're gay. Yeah, <laughs> so... yeah. I wonder how Norm became Norm. <laughs> what do you mean? Like he's just so original and different. Like I wonder how he just. There's no way he was born like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, like if Norm McDonald's on this podcast, he'd be like, so, uh, so, so you guys just, uh, you just talk, huh? Huh. Never thought about that before. Yeah. But I think that's him. Okay, so I think what that's, wanna, what, what should we talk about? <laughs> now nah, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, yeah, yeah. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Just I him. think it maybe is. just like. Got, yeah, yeah. I guess it's not like a character, but it's definitely got to be an inflated version of himself, right? I would think so. He can't talk to his wife and kids. Could you imagine? That would be <laughs> that, that would be a good bit. Imagine a Norm McDonald eating cereal with his family. So, uh, hey, pal, you got uh, Cheerios, huh? <laughs> oh. Hey, honey, you want to put on some coffee? I yeah. like coffee. You like coffee? Ah, <laughs> uh, what do you got going on? Uh, you got one of those. Oh, you got one of those periods there, huh? <laughs> Don't get another woman in the room. You might, you might, you might synchronize. <laughs> yeah. You might synchronize. Honey, you think about synchronizing with little Judy over here, are you? I'm not talking about s- swimming. Right, right. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Jake, you going out for football this year, are you? <laughs> Oh man, somebody better than funnier than me should do that. Norm McDonald having breakfast with his family. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Maybe I should do that as a TikTok. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I was thinking for Patreon we should review nineteen nineties episodes of Saturday Night Live. Okay. That's my favorite. I mean who I mean, of course it's the best decade. Yeah, from nineteen ninety to two thousand. Yeah, because you start with like uh, Chris Farley and David Spade and Dana Carvey and Mike Myers and Ed Sandler and all them, and then you end up with like Will Ferrell and Chris fucking Rock. Yeah, I, f- I always forget he was on there. Yeah, I know it's easy to forget. My my favorite era of Saturday Night Live was the Will Ferrell era and Chris Kattan and Jimmy Fallon, because yeah. that was when I was like hardcore watching every Saturday Night Live in high school. Because I yeah. thought it was edgy and cool. Yeah. <laughs> did I ever? Did I ever tell you the Norm Macdonald uh, Chris Kattan story? No, you have a story. Well, this is this is in Jim Brewer's book, and I apologize if uh, if I if I'm screwing this up. But uh, Jim Brewer tells a story about Norm Macdonald and Chris Kattan hated each other. Like hated each other, and uh, didn't <laughs> like him at all. And and, uh, and I guess they were doing like a. Uh, the, anybody, somebody can fact check me if I'm right. I'll get I'll get the gist of it. Like, but I guess they were doing like a uh, Twilight Zone thing. Okay. And uh, and Chris Kattan had like the first words of the skit, and uh, Norm Macdonald was Rod Sterling. Is it Sterling? That's his name, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Norm Macdonald was Rod Sterling, and and Chris Kattan was mad all week because Norm Macdonald couldn't get like 
he couldn't get Rod Sterling down very well. Like he was doing like a really bad version of Rod Sterling and it was pissing Chris Kattan off. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so it was, uh, it was Saturday night and they were coming back from commercial and, uh, Chris Kattan, like I said, he had the first words and, um, they were counting down five, four, three. And Norm says to Chris Kattan, Hey Chris, everybody knows you're gay. And Chris didn't have time to react because the camera was on him. Yeah. And he had to say his words. And then Norm comes out and does like the most perfect Rod Sterling. Yeah. This is the way that Jim Jim Thor said. I think I've heard that before. That's got to be true. I've heard that before. I might have told you that before. But yeah, I guess he just did. He timed it perfect. He's just like, Chris, everybody knows you're gay. And then Chris just had to be like looking at the camera and delivering a line. Do you remember how Jimmy Fallon and every skit used to bit break every oh, single yeah. fucking thing? He always laugh, and I, I always heard that uh, other castmates got pissed off at him because of it. Oh yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. That they they're just so annoyed by it. Yeah, because they're like, oh, you're taking all the attention away, and right, like I think of specifically, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but. Uh, they're in a hot tub. Will Farrell, Jimmy Fallon, I think Sherry O'Terry, somebody else, probably Anna Gasteyer, because she was in that that fucking. In yeah. Will Farrell, the lovers, the lovers. I don't know, but they're in, they're in like a hot tub, and uh, Will Farrell's being Will Farrell, and Jimmy Fallon just can't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that one. That's one of the best speeches. That's when they're like, Will Ferrell and his wife are like swingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they that's love it. us. Yeah. We love us. Yeah, and Will Ferrell's got like the uh, Socrates beard. Yep, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Back of a, he's a professor. We're professors at the university. <laughs> yeah, and, and Fallon's just like losing it. He has his hands in his face and shit. Yep. I mean... <laughs> Personally, I love it when they always break because it makes me laugh real hard. Yeah. But I can see if you're like a super comedy professional. And... Yeah. It's like there's there goes Jimmy being cute again. Yeah, exactly. Jesus, Jimmy. <laughs> can you wait for Molly to get her punchline in before you start? <laughs> Molly <laughs> Shannon has feelings, too. <laughs> Did I talk about this before? Like my favorite uh, Chris Farley sketch. I can never find it, and I found it in uh, Hulu. Has that? Uh, there's this uh, documentary right now called "I Am Chris Farley." Did I talk about this? I yeah, think I, I think so. Yeah, I've seen it too. Okay, well, you know they're they're talking to. Uh, is it Tom Wolf? Is that his name? The guy that wrote uh, Tommy Boy. I can't remember his name. Something Wolf, Chris Wolf, maybe or whatever. But uh, did he like? He, did he write Black Sheep too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he? Because yeah. it's the yeah. same fucking movie. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Except for worse. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I love Tommy Boy. I don't know. I, I like Black Sheep okay, but Tommy Boy is like classic. But, uh, um, and he talks about this in there and they show like a little clip of it and it's got, it's this, it's this, uh, SNL skit called Tales of Little Women and I can't find it anywhere and it pisses me off because I swear I seen it one time on like a dvd and it might have been like the best of chris farley and it might have been in like the second dvd where there was like extras or something Mm -hmm. i don't know but uh the whole premise is is that it's like spade of course and uh and i can't think of the girl's name right now but anyway they're all they're all skating around god who is it jane Curtin? maybe no was she in there with chris farley no no jane hook jane Curtin. Jane Curtin was like in season one. Yeah. Who's the one that was like, uh, is it Jane Hook? No, there was one. I can't remember. You know her if you saw her, but she was she was in the skit too. But anyway, uh, it's Chris Farley and a bunch of these, bunch of other cast members, and their dress is like, they're obviously in like the 1800s, and they're down at like the old mill pond ice skating. <laughs> the mill pond. <laughs> yeah. And Chris Farley's like, Mother said that when we get too cold, we can come in for tea and crumpets. And everybody's like, oh, he, he, tea and crumpets. He's like, what a glorious, glorious day. And then all of a sudden, Chris Farley falls through the ice. <laughs> <laughs> and they all start screaming. And uh, 
whoever, God, I can't think of her name. She's like, oh, Lord, whatever shall we do? And Chris Farley's like flapping her on the water. And he's like, oh, Lord, whatever shall we do? Save me, you whore. <laughs> It's just so good because he's just doing like these like crazy like he's he's amazing ice skater he always was, and uh, he's just doing like these crazy ice skating moves and he's just like oh tea and crumpets and all <laughs> like, you know, save me or that seems about right yeah yeah it's great all right nothing was funnier than Chris Farley just screaming no I think that's the best yep. Well, I think this is all Patreon content, so if you're listening to this, you're one of the elite, and we Sorry. appreciate you. No, I, <laughs> I I had a good time. I don't care, whatever. I had a great time. I just don't know if it was uh, too inside baseball or something. It was. I think it's entertaining, but I don't think, yeah, you know, whatever. Right. So thank you all the people, and uh, we'll see you next time, all right? Bye-bye.